Hi, and welcome to this thematic discussion of Livewire, where we'll be discussing the Healthcare and Biotech Summit, BioShares. My name's Adam Alcock, and today I'm joined by Stuart Roberts from NDF Research and Andy Gracie from Australian Ethical. Thank you both for joining me today. Good to be here. Andy, we've recently just got back from the BioShares Biotech Summit, uh, where 170 investors get together with companies and powwow everything Aussie life sciences. In your view, what were the key takeaways we got this year from BioShares? Um, in terms of the BioShares conference, which is a great conference to attend, I think uh, e the emergence of eHealth uh, was, was pretty interesting in terms of uh, there was more technology companies, uh, information technology companies presenting, um, and also increased focus on metabolic type diseases. So not just diabetes, I think you know, NASH uh, was talked about by a number of companies. Mm, definitely, yeah. And there's, there's a whole lot more space around immuno-oncology as well that was touched on. Stuart, uh, we've picked up on some recent amazing technology and science that's come to the fore. Yes. Looking forward for the next 12 months, what do you see as the key areas to evolve over those next 12 months? Yeah, so uh, it's drug reprofiling, I think, is the big, big picture. There's a number of companies that have come to the boards in recent days that uh, have taken old drugs that have been around for a long while. Mm. They've found new uses for those drugs, take advantage of the old safety profile potentially move in, in some cases into an orphan drug indication right. uh, with, with fairly rapid um, turnaround. Okay, excellent. I, I've always found biotech and healthcare to be a particularly patient investor's game. Capital raising, inevitable trial delays seem to be the norm. And is, is, is this what people should expect when they invest in this sector? And I suppose when you're looking at companies, what do you look for when you're, you're investing in this space? Um, in terms of what, what I look for, um, you know, for starters, you know, we like the biotech biotech, uh, the uh, medical device, the pharmaceutical uh, sectors, because uh, we're not only investing in a company that uh, is developing a business for the east coast of Australia, we're investing in companies that will potentially have a you know, global product. Uh, these can be very big companies, there, there's, there's companies that we can look at that have been great successes in Australia, the, the, the cochleas, the, the resmeds. Um, so, so, so really in terms of what we really like is the fact that we're dealing with a potential global product. Mm. Um, so you know, what, what we look for is, is, is great science, and I think there's great science that comes out of a, a, a Australian universities. Um, we're looking for key kind of phases to invest in. You know, we're not necessarily looking to invest um, you know, while, while we're in the petri dish, or you know, we're really looking for kind of uh, to invest when we've seen efficacy being recorded uh, and we can see kind of key milestones which investors, not just Australian investors, international investors will look at the science and say, you know, this is quality science and this is a potentially, you know, a, a very big product uh, so we want to get involved. So that's the, that's, the, that's the great thing about investing in this sector. It's, it's not just a domestic play, it's an international play. Mm. Right. And in terms of the big pot of money being obviously in the US for Australian companies, yes. What can we do to, to get more exposure to the US companies? What, how can Aussie biotechs get over there and, and make a name for themselves? Yeah, so um, uh, what I've been noticing in, in about 14 years of covering this sector, um, mainly on the sell side and now in, now in my own firm, uh, is that the companies are getting better at reaching out those capital sources in the US. Uh, we had a couple of IPOs on NASDAQ of ASX listed companies. Uh, the timing of those w wasn't uh, ideal uh, and, and th those uh, uh, raisings haven't gone so well. But uh, the fact that they were, were actually able to uh, interact with uh, institutional investors in the US in a, in a, a, a serious way, I, I thought was um, uh, a, a step change for us. So um, uh, I think the, the answer to your question is they've just got to burn more shoe leather uh, and, and you know, build up the frequent fly points on Qantas or whatever, which, which they are doing. I know, no, there's definitely some good companies doing that. Right. Drug development, clinical trials, often considered the science domain of nerds like you and me. Yes. In terms of investing in this space, how, how rugged is this space? Is this the double black diamond, so to speak, of investing? Yeah, so I always tell people if you're going to invest in life sciences, do your homework and, uh, and then do some more and then, and then do some more after that. Um, so uh, you're always learning something. Um, uh, and anything that can go wrong will go wrong. Uh, but when it goes right, it goes right in a, in a, particular, uh, a particularly special way, yeah. as, as we've seen time and again with companies that were one cent uh, a week ago and then and, you know 50 cents a, a year later mm. um, so yeah how do you go about uh, doing your homework well um, we've all had interactions with the healthcare system in the past um, uh, you know right from the time you went to the doctor you, you had to learn something about the way healthcare works uh, I, uh, the, the most knowledgeable people I know about biotech are people who got sick and, and had to go look for um, uh, for new opportunities 
Um, so the advice I have to investors is um, don't be intimidated by all the language. You can buy um, uh, uh, dictionaries that, that will explain the, the language to you. And you probably learned enough biology at school to, to kind of understand what's, what, what's going on. Um, uh, go in there with the attitude, well, you know, once I understand this space, I'll, I'll, be, I'll, I'll know the risks. Um, but you're right, it, the, the, the risks uh, can, can wipe you out in a black diamond type fashion if you're not careful. That's right, so it's, it's fun until the fun ends on a black diamond run. What about a green run somewhere on the, uh, the ASX? Is there anywhere that retail investors can, uh, can have a bit of a chance? Is there something that you consider to be a bit more of a smoother path? Well, I think um, the medical device area has been more rewarding uh, for Australian investors. You've seen companies like Nanasonics uh, perform very strongly. Um, you know, with a, with, a, with a truly innovative product and now they're executing in terms of, uh, you know, re reporting their first uh, level of profitability this year. But I think in general, in terms of investing, uh, particularly on the pharmaceutical side, I think uh, understand your milestones in terms of understand where the company is in terms of clinical development. Uh, if we're still in the petri dish, uh, well maybe someone else can finance that. Uh, but if, you know, if we've got phase two efficacy data, we uh, understand the time frames in terms of uh, the, the current uh, clinical study, uh, and we understand that you know, if we get a success in the study, you know, what the upside is, I think they are the kind of things people need to slowly get their head around. And it's not just about investing in something because they, they love the idea of it, which I, I think a lot of retail investors um, end up investing, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a commercial decision and, and also don't be afraid to take some money off the table if, um, if a share price is appreciating come a, a key milestone because, uh, you know, that may give you additional monies, you know, if, if, if there's a little hiccup and, and invariably the sector, there are hiccups, um, clinical studies, um, product development takes longer, costs more, uh, but the exciting thing is, um, you know, the results uh, the financial results are there, you know, if these companies uh, uh, can deliver on, on, on many of their endeavours. And, and it's fair to say that Australia has been particularly good at life sciences, uh, in the life sciences space, at medical devices over the that's years. Fair, it's, right. it's like we, we're, we're, we're developing a expertise as a country in that, in that space. So there you go. In terms of the uh, device sector, that sounds like a good place to start for, for the green run. Right. We all came away from BioShares with reams and reams of notes. If, you, if you're looking for you know, a starting point in the life sciences space, Andy, what, what would you be, you know, something to look at to start with? Uh, yeah, hard question in terms of, uh, and I suppose I'll draw on you know, in terms of you know, wh what I invest in uh, and companies that I think uh, you know, are attractive risk return situations. And something, um, you know, a company that was at the BioShares conference, Innate Immunotherapeutics, um, is capitalised around 80 million at the moment. Uh, it is uh, fully enrolled in terms of its phase two uh, secondary progressive MS study, and we're due to report sometime in the September quarter next year. Now, a, a, a hit here, and uh, you know, if the company is able to show that there is benefit for those patients, um, because it's such a big end market. Uh, investors will, will do, do handsomely. Of course, if, if, if they're unable to chisel out uh, some efficacy, you know, the downside is, is significant. But uh, I think from a risk return point of view, you don't put a, you know, all your eggs into a, you know, a company like Innate Immunotherapeutics uh, because it's a high risk you know, drug developer. But it's a very interesting company and the, the company's got the benefit in that there's been a compassionate program in New Zealand running for uh, multiple years and patients uh, who have been on drug uh, maintain, you know, they are getting benefit um, around energy, um, around uh, cognition. So we're hoping we can chisel out a, a clinical benefit in, in these uh, blinded studies and um, we can attract a partner um, towards the end of next year or early 2018. There you go. So we all know you've got one or two uh, table <laughs> bangers up your sleeve. What's your number one table banger for the 12 months ahead? Yeah, so uh, coming out of the, um, the, the presenting companies, uh, Resap Health, a uh, Western Australian company, um, they have developed uh, one of the world's uh, first smartphone-only diagnostics for, for respiratory disease. Um, it's as simple as um, take your mobile phone, cough into it, and uh, an algorithm can then determine what kind of respiratory disease you have. Do you have asthma? Do you have COPD? Maybe you've got, you've got pneumonia. Um, to be able to detect that without any, um, any extra hardware re required, uh, and, a, and a, an algorithm that gets better and better over time because they've built machine learning into it, uh, can be quite powerful. Uh, they're now in, uh, in the late stage studies and they expect to have FDA approval for that diagnostic in, in early 2017. 
a big trend in medicine, and we're going to see this more and more, is telehealth. No more going and sitting in uh, doctor surgery reading a uh, new idea while you wait two hours to see a doctor. Um, the the, the uh, telehealth companies now have set, a, uh, set themselves up, particularly in the US, where a 10 minute wait then gets you in front of a doctor that you're talking to remotely via Skype. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and they can provide uh, some, some, uh, some early um, uh, primary care for you. Uh, this this feeds, feeds into that very well. So doctor, I've got this cough. Um, uh, you cough into the smartphone, he can then tell, uh, or it looks like you've got pneumonia, we better get you into the emergency, um, emergency department. Huge, uh, huge gains there. Fantastic. Well, there's, there's some different ideas. Okay, so there you have it. If your portfolio is feeling sick this time of year, potentially adding a biotech booster shot in the arm might just be the secret.